Hi, I'm Rocco Stano and welcome to Storymakers. Today, our storymaker is Wendy Mass and she and her husband, Michael Brower, are the authors of Space Taxi. Welcome. Thank you, thanks for having me. Space Taxi, I know it's hard enough to get a taxi sometimes here in New York City. I bet it's really difficult to get a taxi in space. So what is Space Taxi? Space Taxi is a story about an eight-year-old boy who learns that his dad isn't a regular taxi driver like he thought, but an intergalactic taxi driver whose job it is to shuttle aliens from planet to planet. So Archie gets to go along as his co-pilot and he kind of guides him, his dad and the taxi through space and they meet this talking cat named Pockets who is like a police cat. And so behind his Pockets, are, which is like patches of fur, he pulls out all these gadgets and gizmos and he kind of winds up recruiting Archie and his dad and they go on missions and try to keep the universe safe. Along with keeping the universe safe, the reader is actually taught some things about science. Right, and I mean, even though it's, you can't really drive a space taxi or, you know, a taxi into outer space, we don't think, mm -hmm. it might be going on, we don't know. That's but, true. But we decided to really base it on what we do know about science. And so at the end of each of the books, there's this section called Three Science Facts to Impress Your Friends and Teachers. Mm -hmm. And we pull facts from the books and kind of go you know, into a little bit more detail about them. So if they really want to impress their teachers or their parents at dinner, you know, they could sit down and say, hey, mom, do you know what a wormhole is? Yes. And what is a wormhole? So the example that we give in the book is, say you have an apple and you have a worm who's trying to make his way around the outside of the apple. It's gonna take him a lot longer to get around if he's going on the outside than if he were to tunnel through it. So a wormhole is sort of a theoretical idea now, hopefully someday they'll be able to prove it, but the idea is that there are these points through space that will kind of get you somewhere faster. So Archie and his dad go through a wormhole in the first book and it's sort of like this crazy roller coaster ride and then they wound up like on the other side of the galaxy almost instantaneously. So your co-writer is your husband. Yeah, I mean, we, we work together really well, um, which is nice <laughs> considering we have to go home together. So what we'll do is we'll kind of brainstorm the idea for each of the books and then he'll go and make it into an outline. And then I'll take the outline and turn it into the first draft and then he'll edit that and I'll rewrite it and it'll kind of go back and forth. So we're never both doing the same thing at the same time. Um, you know, we're not really watching over each other's shoulder. So it works out well. And your earlier book is The Candy Makers, a candy coated mystery full of mouth watering surprises. 453 pages. What makes a kid you know, want to read a 453 page book? I think it's after the days of Harry Potter that kids aren't intimidated by long books anymore. And in fact, if I tell them, you know, well, this next book is only 300 pages, they'll say, no, it needs to be longer. So I kind of don't think about the page length anymore. And I just kind of take the time I need to feel like I'm fully telling the story. When an author writes a book, sometimes they bring a little bit of themselves into the book, and like things they like to do. So you must like candy. I do, I do like candy. Do you make candy? Um, I tried to make candy when I was doing research for the book, and really I think the idea I decided to write The Candy Makers and the sequel is so that I could eat a lot of candy in the name of research. I did, <laughs> I did eat a lot. Yeah, so then I had to learn how to make candy too, and if you boil sugar for too long, you get a lollipop, or too short, you get a gummy bear. Like, I had to know that stuff. Especially in the sequel, I feel like I put some of my own interests and hobbies in there. I'm starting to really get into geocaching. What is geocaching? So geocaching is basically using billions of dollars of high-tech satellite equipment to find Tupperware hidden in the woods. You can download this app onto your phone or use this mobile GPS device, and you, wherever you go around the world, you can put in find nearby geocaches, and it'll give you a whole list by sort of how far you are from that place. And then you pick one and you follow the arrow and you wind up within like 10 feet of where the cache is hidden. And then you find it and you log it in and you, they say like, 
take something, leave something, it's sort of filled with little trinkets mm -hmm. and things like a you know plastic compass or a spider ring. So sometimes you find things in there that you didn't know that you needed at that time. So for instance, we could be in the middle of the woods and it's really buggy and you open up the cache and there's a bug repellent wipe. And so something like that's great. And I wind up sneaking that kind of detail into the adventures that they have in the story. So your characters geocache in this book? Uh -huh. So is there anything else about you that you brought into this book? Yeah, well, I mean, The Candy Makers and The Great Chocolate Chase is about the kids from the original Candy Makers, and they go on the road. They go on a road trip in this, like, tricked-out RV. And they kind of have adventures. They each have their own thing that they're trying to solve while they're going together on this joint sort of journey. Like, for instance, I have this hobby of doing magic tricks. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> no, it's just, I love seeing magicians perform and just that kind of wonder that you feel when you see somebody just do a trick right in front of you. Can you do a trick for me? I probably could do a trick for you. Okay. Me. Before I came today, I made this prediction of what I think you're gonna come up with okay. in the course of this trick. So let's put the envelope here. In fact, we'll put this book on top. On top, so no there's no, I can't, it. okay. Right. And so what I have here is this sketchbook. Okay. And it has all of these different faces right. and different parts of it. So it kind of goes like this, like each one's different in the middle and different over here. So you get the idea. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> all right, so depending on how we flip it, you know, you're gonna make a different person. Mm -hmm. It could look like this or like, you know, like that. So I'm going to flip each section and you'll tell me when to stop. Will do. Okay. Stop. Right there. Mm, okay. Okay. So it's do we looking have? pretty weird so far. Oh, okay. Okay, and stop. Okay. All right, bottom part. Stop. Okay. This uh, is what it, we have. Okay, great. <laughs> so let's see how close my prediction came. It is they magic. It is, it is <laughs> magic. Look at that. I would love to know how to do that, but I know there's some sort of magician code that you can't. That's right. uh, You can't share this. You could probably bribe me, like if you had some candy. I oh, might tell candy! You the secret, yes. Well, getting back to candy. Do some uh, characters from other books reappear in this book? I snuck in some of the characters from some of my books that were kind of standalone books that didn't have sequels to them and that kids have asked me, you know, whatever happened to those characters? So I kind of snuck them all in here. So we have um, Mia and her brother and sister from A Mango Shaped Space. Mm -hmm. We have Allie, Bree, and Jack, who are the main characters in Every Soul a Star. And we have Jeremy and Lizzie from Jeremy Fink and the Meaning of Life. So they kind of intersect with the four candy makers at various plot points in the story. So that's going to be some good kid lit trivia. I'm curious to see who's gonna like who's gonna find them first. Well I did. <laughs> that's true, you did. <laughs> you get a candy bar. That's you get a candy it. bar. How do you research uh, for your your books? I, I do wind up doing a lot of research and I love the research process. It's like you're going on a treasure hunt for facts and information. So with the candy makers, I had to learn about candy. With um, the Space Taxi series, I had to learn about outer space mm -hmm. and a lot of different scientific principles. So what I try to do before each book is I kind of match up my notebook that I'll be taking notes in and doing research in and outlining in with the plot line of the book. Right. So um, the one for candy makers I brought along to show you is, um, you know, these whoppers, so oh. these malted milk balls, and that's what I'll use to write the, um, kind of take like, my notes in. Like this, like old fashioned, old school <laughs> note taking. Old school. I yes. think like there's something that your brain is more creative if it's your, you know, pen to paper than right. if you're just kind of typing it up. So having a matching notebook just kind of adds one more little element of fun to the process for me. Well. I have this desire for a piece of candy. So right after this, we have to find some. So thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun. So remember, until next time, give a kid a book in any format. <laughs>